What if robots turned against humans? Let's find out! We start with the classic square map, which will be divided in half by a gigantic wall that will prevent civilizations from meeting each other. Until we decide otherwise. We'll put the savanna ecosystem on both sides of the map to keep things fair. Ensuring resources are distributed fairly so no group has an advantage. We'll let some time pass so that the vegetation can spread, animals start to populate the area, and different resources like minerals and wood appear naturally. Once the environment is ready, the civilizations that are the main characters of this experiment will be placed. On the left side, we'll place the humans, while on the right side, we'll put the robots. With both groups in place, we'll hit play and let them start exploring the land and working on building their respective empires. The differences between the two civilizations are clear from the start. The robots swiftly analyze their surroundings and build a campfire in seconds. In contrast, the humans struggle from the beginning. Disagreements over leadership significantly delay their progress. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the robots have made great progress in their development. They built their first child, a small robot who barely knows the world and has already nearly been eaten by a hyena, but escaped. This shows the savanna is dangerous, so both humans and robots must stay alert to natural threats. Despite the risk, the robots advanced and chose Cooler as their king. After much debate, the humans have finally started working. While one of them is dedicated to construction, the other has gone out to gather food, trying to ensure their survival. Despite this progress, it's clear that they've lost a lot of time and that compared to the robots, their progress is slower. I'll take this moment to rename the kingdom so that it'll be easier to identify them in the future. Now that both groups are settling, it's clear the robots have an advantage. Their strong organization and building efficiency help them advance rapidly, unlike the humans. Let's wait a few decades and see how both civilizations develop by year 100. Humans now hold a significant edge in population and territorial growth. However, the general state of the kingdoms is not exactly prosperous. An intense heat wave has dried up all the trees, preventing new vegetation and making infrastructure development very difficult. This climate crisis has tested the resilience and adaptability of both civilizations. Despite challenges, humans built mines, palaces, and decorations to beautify their kingdom. In addition, they have learned to live peacefully with the animals of the region, which has allowed them to reduce conflicts with the local wildlife. Despite impressive architectural progress, limited resources remain a major challenge. On the other hand, the androids have also managed to build mines and some mills, although they have encountered serious problems when it comes to growing crops. They'll later use it as organic fuel for their biomass generators. Over the years, they have been gradually equipping themselves, although they still have a long way to go to reach their full potential. However, in terms of technology and combat readiness, they are better than humans. Speaking of combat, both kingdoms have armies, but the reality is that they are quite disorganized forces and, to make matters worse, neither of them has any weapons. In their current state, they don't seem to pose a real threat to each other. The big question now is whether they will be able to withstand the lack of food and resources, not to mention the extreme heat that is testing their survival. Year 300. We really aren't lucky, we always arrive at the worst times. The planet is now in a severe ice age, with icy winds transforming the landscape into frozen terrain. Both civilizations have adapted and maintained equal populations. The robots reinforced their structures to endure extreme cold, upgrading homes with stronger materials and optimizing agriculture using advanced methods. Their armies seem larger and more organized, with perfectly synchronized mechanical soldiers. Meanwhile, each citizen continues to perform their role efficiently, driving the kingdom's progress in these difficult times. For humans, the situation differs somewhat. They modernize some mines, greatly boosting resource production and enabling architectural advances to reach the medieval age. Their settlements now have sturdier walls and improved designs. Their armies have improved but still don't match the robot's precision. They have managed to make rudimentary weapons, although some soldiers still carry simple wooden sticks. The leadership difference between the two civilizations is striking. The original human king has been underground for centuries and now Gokusei, known for extravagant tastes, rules. He is lustful but sterile and must frequently sharpen his sword. However, the king of the robots has remained unchanged since the start. As a mechanical being who doesn't age or die naturally, he has gained 302 years of ruling experience. His longevity gives him a major advantage over humans, as his knowledge and his people's technology could greatly impact the future. Thus, we arrive at the year 600. In recent centuries, both civilizations have grown, but robots have expanded faster, reaching nearly 1,700 inhabitants while humans barely exceed 1,000. 
However, beyond population, what truly matters are the advances they've made during this time. The robots have secured naval dominance by building strategic ports and assembling a fleet of warships and merchant ships. Their army has grown in size and sophistication with more advanced, organized units. They also improve defenses by building a large tower and adding several smaller towers across the kingdom to secure their territories. Humans have shown they refuse to be left behind. They have also built ports and ships, securing trade routes and preparing their own navy. They have also built barracks for ongoing soldier training and military research, improving their army's quality. Humans have started taking their initial steps into the modern era through technological advances. Their architecture evolved as old palaces became town halls, creating a more efficient administration. Though there is still a long way to go, this could be a turning point that begins a new era of technology for them. We finally reached the year 1000, and the result is surprising. While the robots seem to have stagnated at almost 1,700 inhabitants, humans have experienced exponential growth, surpassing 2,500. This rise is mainly from their kingdom's expansion and many new modern buildings. This has allowed more families to settle and provided a major population advantage. But that's not all, as they have also achieved a crucial breakthrough, which was the discovery of gunpowder. This has enabled them to produce firearms and strengthen their army further. In contrast, robots lack human-like structures but have perfected their own unique architecture. They prioritize efficient, strong constructions by optimizing resources rather than focusing on quantity. Without further ado, we will tear down the wall that separates them, marking the beginning of the inevitable confrontation. When the wall collapses, both kingdoms quickly send armies to the border, eager to learn what happened. When they come face to face, the humans gaze in astonishment at the metallic figure standing before them. Meanwhile, the robots, after analyzing their opponents, quickly conclude that they are nothing more than simple humans, fragile beings of flesh and bone. So, without hesitation, the androids launch the first attack. The humans, confident in their numbers, try to resist but soon realize the robots' technology far surpasses theirs. The androids wield laser weapons that pierce armor and turn anything they touch to ash. Each shot illuminates the battlefield with bright flashes, vaporizing rows of human soldiers before they can react. The human generals try to reorganize their troops, but panic begins to take hold of them. Rifle bullets barely dent the androids' tough metal, while each robot counterattack causes massive devastation. Human casualties rise rapidly, and what began as a balanced battle quickly becomes a massacre. Within hours, the human defense lines collapse. The cities that were once symbols of their growth burn under enemy fire. With no escape or chance to fight back, the last human soldiers try to flee, but the robots advance relentlessly, securing victory with their trademark precision. Finally, the human kingdom falls. What were once cities full of life are now just smoldering rubble, streets covered in ashes, and buildings reduced to mere shadows of their former greatness. A thousand years of history destroyed in an instant by the robots who have proven to be the dominant force securing their supremacy on the planet. Thank you for making it to the end. Here's another video for you to keep enjoying.